I want to welcome you all to uh, the Arc of Massachusetts, our webinar series. Um, as you know, we have an exciting presentation today um, where uh, we have Michelle Banks and David Sykes from the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission. And what they're going to be talking about is really pretty exciting. Um, there, it's, it's a relatively, I want to say, what, the past couple of years, relatively new program, they'll tell you far more about it, um, called uh, Next Gen, and they're really looking for uh, ways to be able to support the, the youth um, with disabilities that they support at MRC and provide them with some new and different opportunities. So um, I, without further ado, I am going to let uh, David and um, Michelle take it away. Hi, everybody, and thank you for having us here today um, to share with you our presentation about Next Gen Careers. My name is Michelle Banks, and I'm the Strategic Director for the Next Gen Careers Program. And I'll pass to my colleague, David. Good morning, everyone. Now, early afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dave Sykes. I'm the operations director for Next Gen Careers. Fancy way of saying I do a lot of work in the background. It's Craig Laskowski who called. Thanks, David. All right. Yeah. Um, so David and I are going to be sharing this presentation with you, but there's our contact information and you'll um, receive a copy of this deck. And we just encourage you to reach out early and often with questions. Um, he'll also be sharing some contact information about our, from our staff if you wanna reach out to them directly. But we do have a um, large dedicated team that wants to assist um, our next geners and their families and our partners uh, in this effort. So I'm gonna get us kicked off here. Uh, and David's running the slides. So if I gesture to him a little bit, um, I also um, just wanted to share a little bit about uh, myself. I'm a um, Caucasian woman. I'm wearing glasses um, and I have a green sweater on because I couldn't find a red one for Valentine's Day today. So David, did you want to share that? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Michelle. I am a white male with facial hair, bald. I'm not wearing glasses. I am wearing a striped blue shirt with a tie and a dark blue vest. Thank you. Okay, so a little bit about what you're gonna hear from us today. We wanna share with you um, what Next Gen Careers is, the grant that funds it and where it came from. Um, we wanna talk about our target population and service regions, the learning experience that our Next Geners um, are involved in with us, specifically our self-care curriculum, the core components of Next Gen Careers, and in detail, our team roles, which are, um, which is just a, I think one of our largest pieces of innovation in this project, an enrollment pathway for next geners to enter the program, uh, introduce you at least via a slide to our regional supervisors and talk to you about um, some marketing materials in case you have some ideas on where we might be able to display them or share them. Uh, slide please. So in December, Carrie's right, about a couple years ago now, but um, maybe a year and a couple months, December 2021, the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission received a $17 million innovation grant from the Rehabilitation Services Administration. The grant is fully funded through June 30th of 2026 with the potential for renewal. And I'll, I'll just add that through through um, the summer of 2026, we're striving to serve 1,000 um, Massachusetts young adults. Uh, it, this is a five-year demonstration project focusing, focused on improving long-term career outcomes that we've named Next Gen Careers. Um, the grant provides a rich opportunity to pull together best practice areas and innovative ideas from vocational rehabilitation, but also from other sectors that we've seen. Um, specific to young adults with disabilities between the ages of 18 to 30 years old. So we've seen, um, we've seen innovation in places like mental health, in places like adult welfare, in places like child welfare, um, 
or public health in and we're testing these out to see if we can be successful in helping our next geners, our young adults with disabilities achieve their employment goals. Um, so we're really kind of pulling in other areas of best practice into vocational rehabilitation in, in hopes that we're gonna improve the outcomes there. The Massachusetts Commission for the Blind and the Massachusetts Commission for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing are our partners, our sister agency partners on this grant. Slide please. So what is NextGen? NextGen Careers is a new initiative to help young adults explore the world of work. NextGeners learn to advocate for themselves, gain confidence and fast track their job journey. Our target population is um, young adults with a disability ages 18 to 30. And um, we can serve any, any young adult in our service regions who um, meet those two criteria have a disability or in that age range. But we're trying to do things differently. We're trying to improve our outcomes. And part of that is engaging communities of people who have been under-engaged by vocational rehabilitation or other state intervention in the past. So we're really targeting our recruitment efforts and training and service capacity on doing a better job with young adults with intellectual and or developmental disabilities, autism spectrum disorders, sensory disabilities, blind, low vision, deaf, hard of hearing, and from underserved racial and ethnic groups. Specifically, we're, we're looking at how we're engaging Black, Asian, and Latinx communities. And then um, the part we wish could be different, but right now during this um, grant, grant cycle, we are in limited service regions. Um, and right now we're able to serve the catchment areas of the MRC offices in specific areas. Um, and those are the MRC Bos downtown Boston area office, Roxbury area office and Braintree area office, Lowell and Lawrence area offices and Springfield and Worcester area offices meaning we can serve the catchment area of any of those offices. You can see on our website, mass.gov backslash vocational rehabilitation locations down at the bottom of this slide. Um, if you click on that link, you can search, um, you can search to see which, which cities and towns fall in these catchment areas. But to make your lives a little bit easier, we're gonna send you a, a Word document that lists the exact cities and towns. So if you can check that Word document. If a next genner that you know of, or you think somebody might be interested in, you can just look and see if their city or town is on the list. Um, and hopefully, once we show that um, which components of our programs are yielding greater outcomes, we're gonna get the state to let us expand. That's, that's our hope. Um, but that won't happen before June of 2026. Uh, slide please, David. Thank you. So um, one of the main innovate, um, components of innovation in this grant, and um, David in a moment is gonna talk about the rest of them, um, but I wanna get into details about this learning experience called self-cares. So we know that not just young people, but all people um, need to be successful in their um, careers and their chosen professions, some internal capacities. And we're testing the idea that um, we can do this, we can help our next geners increase their um, internal skills in these specific areas that will help them make better career choices, find a good fit for themselves, be happy in what they're doing and really achieve career self-actualization. And the areas of focus for us, you'll see that self-care is an acronym, are self-capacity, so building confidence in their ability to perform a job, self-advocacy, their ability to direct one's own life. And we're helping them understand, our teams are helping them understand that you need to be able to advocate for yourself effectively, both in the workplace and at home where our um, caregivers and our supporters are so key to our success. Um, so practicing those advocacy skills, self-realization, understanding their strengths and limitations and self-sufficiency, the ability to be independent. And we don't see the ability to be independent as needing to be alone in life, um, but really to effectively utilize the supports and resources that exist in your life um, so that you can be successful at work. And now I'm going to pass over to David. Um, take it away. All right, Michelle, thank you very much. Uh, 
more than happy to continue through uh, through the remaining slides and and I can I can I sense some of the excitement out there about next gen careers so again glad everyone's with us couple quick comments uh just to reiterate we do uh you heard uh the the many of the targets that we have uh to serve young adults with disabilities but we we are able to serve young adults with a range of disabilities so we do anticipate uh working with young adults who who are uh, are not are not just uh, living with, uh, say, Asperger's, um, autism spectrum disorders, intellectual disabilities, et cetera. And just one more comment. Uh, Next Gen is an option uh, for, for any young adult uh, who's looking at services with MRC. Um, VR, general VR, is, is, remains an option as well, especially for those young adults who reside outside of the service areas that Michelle mentioned, and we will always make an effort to share information about general VR with them if next gen is not an option. Regarding more of the service piece, uh, there are some core components that are more specific to next gen careers, but I'll, I'll take a moment to highlight where some of the different, where some of the similarities are as well. So the first is what we call a multidisciplinary integrated resource team. Just think of a team of of professionals who uh, can provide services uh, to that young adult, but doing it in the way of uh, uh, a team. So part of our model involves a young adult uh, first being able to choose uh, who will be their team lead, who is the first person uh, that's going to help to guide them uh, through the beginning of their process working with us. And then over time, how other individuals from the teams that are available can come to work with that young adult. The example I'll use is if a young adult, what we call a next genner, is working with us, and that, that next genner first says, I'd like to talk about employment, but I'm not ready to talk about employment. I'd like to talk to a benefits specialist because I or my family receives uh, social security benefits. That's the first person that we can bring forward to work with that young adult. And now that the benefit specialist has joined the team, that young adult may then say, I'd, I'd like to now talk to someone who can give me more of an idea of the different types of careers that are available to me. So that could be a career counselor. Where to find those jobs? That can be an employment success specialist. So we'll build a team around each young adult. Uh, and that's the way that we're approaching this is is a little unique as compared to how VR does. Career preparedness, again, as Michelle referenced, the internal skills portion is very important because, again, we recognize that this may be a place where young adults uh, may not have a, a full appreciation of or full understanding of of where their quote levels are with regard to self advocacy, self um, uh, self capacity, etc. And we view that if we can help them to increase that level of skill, that it will have a long term benefit for job retention. So there's a lot that we do to prepare the young adults. We have specific uh, career pathways that we're looking at, and many of them are STEM focused. Uh, science, technology, engineering, and math, because there is a great need for, uh, uh, for employees in Massachusetts in the STEM fields. And we're confident that if a young adult is interested in exploring, in exploring STEM careers, that we can help them to get an entry-level job in, in a STEM career. And finally, career extended support. So we will, uh, even if a young, I'm sure, should say when a young adult attains competitive employment, that we can remain supporting them to enhance their job retention beyond what has traditionally been a 90-day window. So just wanted to let folks know about that as well. And our goal is obviously to help them to transition to um, into their, their full independence, uh, especially employment focus. Here's that team that I referenced. So each region has a supervisor. Each region has a peer mentor, a brand new position for MRC. We're so happy about this. Having an opportunity to bring a peer mentor into the team experience for that young adult, someone who could speak to their own 
lived experience as a person with a disability, or also uh, uh, perhaps how they have uh, uh, supported a family member uh, who, who has a disability, and also any mentoring experience they might have received in the past, that's very important for us to have that peer mentor at the table. And, and that young adult can choose uh, to work with that peer mentor first if they choose to. We also recognize the benefit of a family partner, a brand new position for MRC as well, specific to next gen careers. Allowing, I should say, uh, not the right word, providing a space in those teams for that family partner to support that young adult, but also because we envision that the families will be at the table as well. We want them to be at the table but that family partner can also provide additional supports and resources to that family outside of the teamwork that we're doing specifically with that young adult. We have career counselors. We have employment success specialists. Again, those are more of the employment focused folks. We have a benefits counselor, and we also have uh, two specialty counselor roles, one to serve uh, deaf and hard of hearing young adults and the other to serve young adults who have either or, um, or are blind or low vision. So hope that little summary is helpful just to get a picture of what our teams are like. So I'm sure this is on the minds of a lot of folks. Uh, how does a young adult and or their family connect to us? Uh, you can easily go to mass.gov, type in next gen careers and our landing page will pop up. And there is a link that you can click on. Uh, you have an opportunity to read more about next gen careers uh, and also learn a little more about vocational rehabilitation as well, general vocational rehabilitation. Before you click on basically, I'd like to get more information and or enroll, right? And what that will generate for us is a very, uh, it's a very short inquiry form that that young adult or family or provider uh, will complete. We receive it uh, immediately. And our goal is to follow up with that family, young adult, et cetera, within 24 hours. And that's where we can provide more information to that young adult and family uh, about what Next Gen Careers is. And that's really where our engagement starts with that young adult. So this again is, is a, is, this has been working very well for us. Michelle, anything else you want to add regarding this landing page and the, the tool that we have? Um, I don't think so. Just that I think that this way into Next Gen Careers and into MRC for the first time for a lot of people is incredibly supportive. Um, and we really tried to listen to the um, young adults that helped us um, design next gen careers and they didn't want to jump through any hoops and they didn't want a whole lot of paperwork to get in. So it, it really is responsive to that feedback. Thank you. All right, we've got one more slide for you. Two more actually. So as I mentioned, we have one supervisor assigned per district yes. and you can see their names, their email addresses and their sure. MRC cell phone numbers as well. So sure. if you could, we, we can, we can, we can also, uh, they can answer questions as well, uh, specific to next gen careers. So they're another, another resource for us too. We do recommend that folks do begin with the, uh, with the inquiry form as we referenced. And one more. So we do have a range of marketing materials that we're using. Uh, some of them are hard copy. Uh, others are digital, and those are being circulated uh, by MRC through our communications team via social media outlets. Um, and at the same time, uh, we're we're joining with with other partners who are also helping us to circulate these marketing materials as well. And the good news is they're translated into several different languages, not just not just English. So, and we welcome any feedback that folks may have regarding uh, not just the marketing materials themselves, but also uh, where we could continue to do outreach where perhaps we haven't, we haven't been able to yet. All right, so I will now pause and, uh, and we'd love to hear your questions or feedback.
David, I just want to add that I've been trying to manage some of the questions in the chat. So maybe what I'll do is read aloud the ones I haven't got to yet. Great. Um, Great. Uh, is, if that works for the group. Um, I was just at it, but then, uh, okay. So there's a question from Alan. How does this next gen careers yep. align with pre-employment transition services that VR is obligated to provide to transition age students? It's a great question. I'd be happy to answer that, Alan. Uh, next gen, because we begin working with young adults at the age of 18, that we don't actually uh, ourselves support uh, pre-employment transition services uh, to young adults. However, we have a great interest in meeting young adults who are currently receiving pre-employment transition services from general VR and ideally, uh, before that young adult, then student has graduated at, at the age of or around 18 and or a young adult uh, who may be uh, transitioning out of, of additional school services between 18 to 22. I hope that that helps to answer your question. Um, okay, and actually I'll invite Alan, did you want, did you want to ask anything further before? Before we move off that question, I want to make sure everybody gets their questions answered. Yeah, this is Alan. Thank you. Uh, what I'm concerned about, and maybe my filters are too strong, it sounds like you're somewhat selective and that people with more significant disabilities who haven't had a lot of opportunity don't get the benefits of something like discovery through customized employment. Are you doing anything like that within this? Or is this more for people who so, seem to present themselves with more capability on the front end and then you're starting to move to the STEM careers when we know lots of people don't even know what their options are because they've been so deprived of the opportunity? So I'll first say, uh, and thank you, Alan, again, for more clarification on your question. Um, we are serving uh, any young adult uh, with a disability and again, we recognize that some of the young adults who we will be working with have more needs and require more supports than other young adults that we may be serving. Um, that's part one. Uh, part two, uh, part of our approach to working with young adults is also determining at a very early point to, to what extent they need, for example, accommodations, other supports in specific places. Uh, and that, of course, it's employment focused, but also uh, looking at what, what a young adult may need now with, the, with regard to an accommodation, for example, uh, so that they can be more independent in the community. That may not be answering your question directly, but I hope that was helpful. I just wanted to add that, um... We started serving next geners on October 1st of 2022. So we are in the um, beginning stages of direct service and we're learning this demonstration product project allows us to be very adaptive and to sort of learn and, and adjust as we go. And what we're seeing so far in terms of who's coming through the door is great variance, great diversity um, in in all of the sectors, but certainly in disability, in um, employment goals. Mm -hmm. And I think David and I so far are pretty um, impressed with what our teams have been able to respond with. Um, so I'm hopeful, Alan, that um, we're gonna be able to reach folks. And yes, we, we want folks in STEM careers, but I think we actually have to do our own webinar on this, on how we approach that because we see opportunity in STEM um, in a lot of different ways. And I think, yeah, we, we want a message to our next geners that even if they don't want a career in STEM, um, we're just gonna educate them on what could what is the potential for that for them, given the projected job growth and um, put in earning potential in those careers. Uh, so hope, I just wanted to add a little bit more on that because it's we're looking at it too. Um, okay, the next question is, can you access both VR and NextGen at the same time? Um, so, Kathy, we do want to reach any NextGener that could benefit from our program that lives in our service region.
but um, it could be in some circumstances, as David said in the presentation, they're better served with a general VR model. And we don't wanna be disruptive to those folks. Um, it could be that they tried VR and it wasn't, it didn't work for whatever reason for them and they exited. Uh, those folks are welcome to try next gen if they want to. We have had some folks that have inquired about VR and then elected um, the next gen model instead because they didn't, they didn't know it existed and they wanna give it a try. Um, what we don't wanna be is disruptive to people's paths. So um, if folks are engaged with VR, they're starting to work, they're starting to develop skills, they might have a relationship with the service provider that VR is um, providing, they likely um, would not move over fully for next gen service. But our hope at MRC is that we're looking holistically at that um, person and meeting their need with all of the resources we have. David, I don't know if you want to speak a little bit more to that. No, thank you, Michelle. That's 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 perfect. We do have if a young adult, for example, has an open case with VR, as Michelle was saying, if if there are services that VR is currently providing and they do, they're helping that young adult to move forward with their goals, then you know, VR can continue to provide that service. I'll I'll say, for example, maybe they're uh, helping to uh, helping to provide support to, toward, an, toward a certificate program, for example, at a local community college. But ultimately, the goal is for that would be for that young adult in their case uh, to transfer over to next gen careers over time. Uh, there is a window where next gen can provide us, for example, more around that self cares that Michelle referenced earlier. Uh, we can do that at the same time for a little while if that case remains open in VR, but otherwise, as I said, uh, ultimately the case will, will come over to us. Thanks, David. Um, who is providing the direct services? So um, we have every next genner has their entire multidisciplinary team available to them as they come into the door and through the life of their work with us. Um, the next gen is actually able to choose who on that team they want to have what we call as their team lead. So they are their um, most frequent contact, their point of contact. Um, and they, our, our hope is that eventually multiple team members will serve in that role for next gen as their needs change, as they grow on their job journey. Um, but they're in charge. So they tell us who they want to work with, who they want on their um, as their team lead. And it could be multiple team members that are working with them at one time. At, we're working with our staff as they approach service to a next gen or that even if you're not front facing, even if you're not frequently in contact with that next gen or that you're still servicing them. So they're still in the background having team meetings about who is doing what who they might wanna bring forward, who's doing um, work in the background on their behalf. Um, and that that's pretty new for Massachusetts um, approach to vocational rehabilitation. Um, David, I'm gonna let you take this one. How's the, what, how is this different from the MRC ACCS program? All right, uh, hmm. well, I'll, I'll first say there are some similarities. So my, my experience, because I worked for DMH previously, so I'm, you know, quite familiar with ACCS, uh, there is a team that is built around a young adult in uh, adult community clinical services. That's that's my impression, right? Um, and that to me is a very, that's a great, great approach. Um, I think the comparison would be that we also, as you've heard, have a multi multidisciplinary team that is built around that young adult. I think how the two, if, if we were to serve a young adult who is also receiving ACCS services, where uh, ACCS does have a vocational focus too, but there's also the clinical support component as well. So there are places I think where ACCS, uh, there are certain things that are in, in that team's lane, and there are others that we could share a lane for example, and maybe around more of that employment planning and, and things of that nature. I'm hoping that that's, that's helpful. 
Um, I see that Brian has his hand raised. I don't know, Brian, if you want to unmute and ask your question or put it in the chat. Hi, this is Brian. <clears throat> yeah, I sorry, I, it was long form and I didn't want to type it all. Um, so I'm Brian Crow, I'm Director of Employment at Advocates. Hello, everybody. Um, happy to see some of the new initiatives, um, specifically the peer support. I think that's um, well well needed and well overdue, and I think it will go in immense uh, ways in, in supporting all the demographics in which we all support. Um, that being said, I will try to be brief and mindful. Um, MRC has been implementing a lot of broad strokes of late with the Connect and and now at the next gen. Um, so vendor side, uh, you know, my question is this, is essentially the turning 22 is demographic, uh, ideally, is, is, and I don't like that phrasing, that's the phrasing that's used, um, is typically going to be the bread and butter of your business in the sense that the age group, the young adults with these particular, um, my question to you is, how is MRC going to essentially determine who's going to be a best fit for services? Because we do support individuals where I wish we did. I would absolutely tomorrow give you these individuals because I think they, they require a level of support that traditional uh, MRC vocational services do not have, right? They need a level of support that, um, we're just contractually not set up for, right? So I, I do think there's a need for what you do. But with this thing, with the abundance of referrals as they come in from people coming out of the school systems, mm -hmm. uh, the young adults, how does MRC plan to approach that? You're talking about a lot of people um, and you don't want to kind of, the snake doesn't want to eat its tail for lack of better phrasing. Is there a plan for that? Michelle, do you want to speak to that first? I think there's a piece of it. You may. Um, I think I understand what you're asking, Brian. Um, so we're, as part of our demonstration grant, we're going to serve a thousand next geners from these specific service areas. Um, and what you're saying is, are you asking like if we're um, concerned about lifting from some of the other initiatives that are happening and maybe where the, um, where the, job seeker is you know how that how they might be impacted by that a little bit so essentially um i'm what i'm saying is there that's a lot of cooks in the kitchen right for a lot of better phrasing mm -hmm. um for the folks who are already getting services i think absolutely love the idea of what you're what you're proposing here i think it's a needed thing um i'm just curious to how mrc plans to identify uh, particular candidates for this particular this particular initiative versus going the traditional um, either general uh, VC route or you know uh, folks with ACCS they are DMH has them contracted as my understand to receive services from the vendors affiliated with with that particular individual. So the question is how is MRC looking at yeah. this as 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 new people come in? into the system. Every year, you know, every day someone's turning 22 and looking for work, looking for services. Um, some go the school approach, but for those looking for that support around vocation, um, this is going to be um, a bit a, a culture shock in a sense to the counselors out of, you know, the offices in Lowell, the office in Chumsford, Malden, you know, the, the places you're going to support. That's going to mean they're going to see less people. How is MRC identifying that that issue coming up and how do they plan to deal with it um, to make sure that people are getting the best services possible for what they need and require to find success? Sorry, I know it's long form. I apologize. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to say, and I think I just might be answering tiny chunks of your question, but I'll try and do that and then have David fill in my gaps. Um, I think that we're not, first and foremost, as I said in this second slide, we're really looking for people that have not been engaged with our the tr traditional ways that we've engaged people. We know that that's not fully serving different um, communities in the Commonwealth. So 
ideally, where we will serve anybody who wants the service that qualifies for it. Ideally, we would like to serve folks that weren't going to walk in through MRC, MRC's doors anyway. There is no concern on the agency's part that there aren't going to be enough referrals for general VR in the in this regions that we're in. Um, we were data driven in the design of this. Um, and we went specific places where the data told us to go. So that's just another piece. And then there was a third one. We're already seeing um, where we're, we're, we're um, closely partnered with the VR offices. We sit in them um, in the service regions that we're in. We work with the leadership. David works very closely with the leadership of all of those offices to ensure that we are appropriately serving the, the right um, people for our grant. Um, oh, and we use vendors too. So um, as you know, VR office, our, our, our regional teams are not, our, our next centers are not limited to the internal folks at, in, um, that make up our regional teams. Our regional teams are at, can access contracted services, same as general VR can on behalf of their clients. David, what did I miss or maybe not say very clearly? No, no, you, no everything was great. Uh, for example, our, our competitive integrated employment services providers that we, we know that next gen will, in some instances, uh, benefit from that young adult, will next gen will benefit from that service, for example. So we don't see that we're taking uh, referrals away from a, a CIS provider. We actually see it as we're, we, we are an additional uh, source of, of uh, uh, funding source and uh, and we need service may need services from CIS providers in the future. I just would go back to add regarding MRC Connect because I know uh, someone had referenced that earlier. Um, we're currently determining if young adults are available for or, or rather um, uh, are and we have our our criteria is really not as as um, structured as, as it may be in VR, but let me say it this way. Um, a young adult who's determined eligible for next-gen careers uh, is technically also eligible for, for general VR. And MRC Connect, uh, when we join MRC Connect, they will help to determine if that young adult is what they're available, what they're eligible for. And uh, again, as I said, uh, next Jenner uh, is all, already determined eligible for VR services if they choose to go that way. I just wanted to wanted to mention that. Thank you very much, both of you, for your answer and clarification. Um, I, full disclosure: not concerned about um, referral source or anything. I was just generally curious to know how the process will differ now that there is a new uh, a new option available to individuals. So thank you both. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, okay, I've got the chat here and um, Paula, did I skip yours? What is the, I thought I answered that, but I don't see my answer there. What is the, and hi Paula, by the way, a great partner of NextGen. <laughs> what is the turn time to hearing from a team member once the form is submitted? Um, it's about one to three business days, I would say, David, right? Yes. It's, it's relatively fast. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And then do you have, oh, and Trisha, I was just typing your response, but I'll put it in there. I'll answer it too. Do you have established relationships with employers or is it more ad hoc depending on the next generous needs and interests? My answer to that is both. Yes. Um, we, we utilize existing relationships with employers as well as training programs. And we're also forging new pathways there. Um, through our employment success specialists. Um, do you have community STEM partners already involved? David, I can take that unless I'm hogging the sure. chat. <laughs> okay. Um, we do, we do have community and STEM partners and um, every day we get more information, particularly in the tr area of training. Um, for STEM careers, we take a look at what need is, and um, we are closely partnered with um, our job placement team um, and share resources with them as well. But we do have these employment success specialists um, 
and we also are developing a warehouse like um it's in the form of an excel spreadsheet right now but we have a specialist that's um forming a warehouse of stem opportunities and the training programs that exist to get our folks into them um just confirming that someone from Boston, Cambridge, not Boston proper, would not be eligible, unfortunately. Yes, that is confirmed. Um, the Cambridge, the city of Cambridge is covered by our Malden office, and we're not in Malden just yet. Um, have you placed any young people in jobs since October? I don't know the status as of right now, David. I don't know in, in terms of job. I don't know that we have anybody in long-term employment yet, but I do think we have some folks that have started. Position. Indeed, we do. Uh, and I'll say in a couple of cases, it could be a young adult who is currently being served by VR or we we they've signaled to us that they currently have a job. But to answer it more more directly, we we on our own have not currently placed a young adult in employment. But if a young adult says, I want help with getting a job now, uh, that's our starting point. Uh, for that for that young adult thank you um charlene su oh had suggested an faq yes we have one in development and we'll circulate that via carrie who i just saw has her hand up <laughs> so <laughs> you know, i you know i'm just really curious to, to um i love first of all i love that um we're calling um them next geners you know, <laughs> which is wonderful. And it's like a forward motion. And the other question I had was really, um, could you talk a little bit about some of the STEM careers that people are exploring? Michelle, you want to talk about the ethical hacker? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. It's a great story. And it's right. True. When we talk about this, um, when we talk about the warehouse, um, we are seeing these new opportunities every day. And um, David and I were in a presentation that was on ethical hacking, right? We need folks that can sort of counter hack. Cybersecurity is an extremely large field growing at a very fast rate with not enough workers in it. So the way we're approaching that is through training programs and um, connections with employers. Cisco, I think, is our um, strongest partner. They knew that they needed some cybersecurity skill and were willing to put up the resources for training there. Um, we had a, a great story actually coming out of the yard ER of a next gener who realized great success after um, they, you know, needed to leave college. Um, they attributed sort of emerging adulthood and managing their disability and then also trying to manage a, a college curriculum is just not going well for them. And they moved out into one of our training programs and is working for a tech firm right now um, at a very attractive salary. On the other side of things, um, that that's sort of your your what you might picture as a STEM fields um, pathway. But there are a number of other ones where we see STEM jobs existing in traditional non-STEM fields. Retail is a, is a large one. Real estate is another one. Um, and that there are a plethora of opportunities for folks um, who might do use their same skills in a non-STEM field and get paid significantly less or might use these same skills in a non-STEM field and not be on any type of career ladder. Um, I, I can't remember if that answered your question, Kerry. Um, I don't think it did now. <laughs> Go ahead, David. Just, did you want no, to? I'll, no, it's, I, love, I love the question. And Michelle, thanks for the info you provided. Um, I'll just comment that a, a next gener who says, I want to be a video game programmer. Uh, we recognize that that's, that's of great interest to a lot of, of young adults you know, across the whole country. But think of this as an option of, of that ethical hacker role. We, we know that that young adult has computer skills, they're tech savvy. We would at least make an effort to, to provide that information to that young adult and let them know that there, there is another option you know, that you may want to explore. I'll also touch briefly on food service. Um, young adults who are currently working as a dishwasher in a restaurant. And I will say th that for that young adult, they may be thinking, Mm, this is what I can do, and they're not really looking forward to a, a long-term career plan. 
we have the opportunity to talk to that young adult about the fact that they've learned uh, sanitation procedures by working in that restaurant. Hopefully uh, there are other processes that can transfer over to working in a lab setting, for example. So that's where we're trying to make that, bridge that connection for that young adult to say, hey, it's great that you're working as a dishwasher. And in fact, if a young adult comes to us and says, I wanna be a dishwasher, we're not gonna say no to it. But we have an obligation to say to that young adult, here's some other options there. Gee, this is where you could go if you wanna start out as a dishwasher. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah, David and I were just talking um, yesterday with one of our, a few of our team members about a next gener who has a strong interest in um, psychology and personality mm -hmm. testing. Mm -hmm. And there, there is a strong STEM component and opportunities that could help. She might be able to contribute to a team that's doing personality testing, maybe not in the initial way that she envisioned, but um, there's a num number of, of functions she could do there that might bring her great gratification um, contributing to that work. Um, and I'm just thinking like analyzing that data is a STEM job. <clears throat> yes, Paula. So first, David, I just wanna say, I love hearing you say that when you, you so the dishwasher might be the next step to something else, because mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing that we need to work on in this segment is that this isn't not you're not getting a job that's your end all be all you're only going to do this forever which has sort of been the mentality in disability employment up until this time of you know you're lucky to have a job so just keep it um so i love that that um you both know that i love this program um and at, you know what i want to say to everybody who's just hearing about it is the biggest difference is that the person is really driving the train um and that it is really about them talking about what they want to do or helping them discover what they want to do to if they haven't been exposed before. It is completely a 360 from what you're used to in any MRC service you've been getting. It is not that short term, light touch. Um, I don't remember if it was Alan or somebody asked, what's the loop from Prietz? So I run a Prietz program. And the loop from me is that it falls in perfectly with what you've been telling them in Prietz. Um, it, it will at least what my program is telling them in Prietz, which is, you know, these are the options and you can explore all of them. Let's find out, you know, where your strengths are. Um, remember that most of our students that are in transition have been hearing for at least 14, probably 20 years, all the stuff they can't do, right? So this is about turning the tide to what they can do and figuring out how that moves into a job. So what this team does is it's really a team that's wrapping around to figure out how they're going to get there, whether it's that they need um, support socially or they need, uh, you know, where, wherever they're starting is meeting them where they're at. So I would look at people who you're like, man, they're not fitting in the traditional MRC mode. They don't fit necessarily in DDS. They, they you know, they're kind of in that middle zone, but they need to move forward. And those are the people that I would start with in terms of referrals. Thank you, Paula. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to try, David, I'm definitely going to need your help with this, but I'm going to try and bite off a bunch of these questions with one sure. answer. On, and it's about sort of the caseload and the approach um, to the with the team and also job coaching in CIES. Mm -hmm. So if I'm being overambitious, you can all feel free mm -hmm. to dial me back here. <laughs> but, um, there was a question about caseload and um, we don't have a a one-to-one um, -one caseload in the sense, the question was um, how many clients maximum will a peer mentor or family partner have? And you gotta remember our approach to this is that the team holds the case and that different people step forward in the work of that case. And there is one designated team lead and that team lead isn't necessarily doing all the, isn't definitely not doing all the work on the case. They're just doing most of the communicating and the coordinating of the logistics. Um, and the reason that they're the team lead is because they're being responsive to a request from the next genner and um, what their, you know, activities and needs are. So we don't have, my answer is we don't have a maximum caseload, but that doesn't mean that one person's going to have a hundred people. It means um, that the teams are going to serve, these three teams are going to serve a thousand young adults over the next three years. Um, and 
And if those thousand young adults come in in the next four weeks, which is, I can tell you right now isn't going to happen, <laughs> um, then you know we'll be, we'll need to caseload manage at that point. Um, but the way that things have been going in our referral sources, where we have a management plan um, that we've been able to be responsive to everybody that's come in, and no one person on the team holds any specific next genner. Um, so then the next question is just sort of around job coaching and CIES utilization. Uh, and how, what we've, how we've been approaching this right now is the team um, working with the next gener identifies their goals, the needs that they have to reach those goals and um, determines who on the team is gonna serve what role. If the team can't meet the need, or if the need isn't appropriately met by the disciplines that we have present on the team, they, they could potentially be contracting that out to CIS or bringing in a job coach at that time. It's extremely specific to the next gender and what their need is. And now I'm gonna kick it over to Tim <laughs> to help me message that appropriately if there's- Oh, I think you've, I think you've hit it well. Uh, and again, we have, the goal is for us to be able to help that young adult not just attain the job, but also retain it. And there may be instances where um, additional supports, and that could sometimes be at a job site, will be necessary uh, for a period of time for that young adult. So we have some internal capacity within our own team, but we also recognize that there are places where um, a CIS provider can provide more of those uh, supports and at least again, especially helping to ensure uh, job retention. Thanks, David. And Charlie, I cut and pasted your chat into an email that I'm going to get ready to <laughs> um, send out. So thank you for that. We will definitely be connecting with you on that employment um, You're opportunity. Welcome. <laughs> we look forward to it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Okay, my cut and paste through my chat off a little bit. Is there a set support duration for each participant? Um, no, no, David, do you want to talk about, you had mentioned in your presentation about being flexible with 90 days and et cetera. Right, I right. I, I, I sometimes go a little too technical from the vocational rehabilitation hat that I used to wear. Um, it, folks may be aware that when a when a young adult or any any uh, disabled person that that VR is is serving, uh, once a young adult, for example, has started their employment, uh, the clock can start ticking uh, toward ninety days, and we VR has viewed that as a successful employment outcome. But as I was saying earlier, that we also uh, we're not holding that ninety days as tightly. Uh, because we know that, that young adult may need uh, more supports beyond the 90 days, as I said earlier, to keep the job. But Michelle, I don't think I'm answering that fully. Um, I, I understood the question is just sort of, is there a cutoff for services? Um, and you had you answered it right off the bat, no. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would say that as long as the next gener is utilizing our services and working with us, we'll be working with them. Um, mm -hmm. towards the conclusion of the grant, exactly. at which time um, it's a little bit who knows right now. Um, we're hoping that and we're confident this grant's going to get extended, mm -hmm. um, but VR isn't going anywhere. So we also yeah. will, would could be working with our, and, and may also in the life of the case have to engage the general VR office because that becomes a good fit for um, our next gen. We have the capacity to do that as well. I would only add quickly, and thank you, Michelle, and again, it goes back to our the fact that we're a demonstration grant and we're here to showcase and and therefore uh, later provide takeaways and best practices to general VR so that they can improve their service to young adults ultimately. Uh, however, we are also, as a part of our model, looking at getting young adult, helping our next geners to get into training faster, do more internship and apprenticeship and get a job faster. And that's again, why we're also looking at, at STEM in addition to other, other careers, 
because we recognize that there is, as you heard earlier, a tremendous need uh, among STEM employers in Massachusetts. Um, Michelle asked, does MRC have to make the referral? Um, nope, anybody can access that inquiry form and we are gonna connect to you. We're gonna find you and, and get ourselves to that next gener so they can get information um, and make the decision whether they wanna join our work. And um, Bobby Nelson, sorry if you've answered this already, but should someone graduate from high school before submitting an inquiry or would they be better off overlapping the service with their senior year? Um, so it really kind of depends on the next gener and what their needs and availability are for service. My suggestion is once you know this might be a good fit for next gener, I would connect us immediately and we'll have a conversation with you on when the best time and with them, um, when the best time for them to begin services. If it's not right away, um, because they've got some other obligations, commitments to finish high school, um, you know, we can hold, we can set a timeline with you, um, but, but I wouldn't hold back, wouldn't hold back, I'd ask. David, anything else you wanna say on that? No, you covered it. Yes, and Christiane, yes, Jabril is fantastic and um, has been a great partner for us. So happy we found him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carrie, with four minutes left, I think we'll... Yeah, so anyways, this was so informative and um, I just, you know, applaud <laughs> the both of you and MRC for taking this, you know, kind of a giant leap in terms of really shaking up how services are provided, opportunities for young adults and um, that they're in the center of the ring, which is, which is awesome. So anyways, um, thank you so much. Uh, Great information. Um, like I said, we will be sending out this uh, presentation to you. Uh, the recording will take a little bit to get up, but we'll get it out on our um, YouTube channel up at the ARC. So if you uh, missed it or want to listen again, you'll be able to do that. So I want to thank David and Michelle for all this great information, your hard work, and wish you the best of luck. And I can't wait to bring you back and just see a um, little bit longer period what kind of progress you're making. So, okay, everybody have a terrific day and thanks for attending. All right, bye-bye. Yeah.